Hi guys, Rex here. Are you new to Hunt Showdown? Here are 10 tips to help you improve. Number 1. Hunt Showdown is full of sound traps. When you're moving around in the bayou, beware of these sound traps as they can easily give away your position even from a distance. The most dangerous sound traps are crows, ducks, horses, chicken coops and dog pens. Crows and ducks fly into the air when triggered and can be seen from far away, helping players to pinpoint your location and the direction that you're likely to be moving in. This is because they're flying away from you when triggered. But you can use firebombs or poison clouds to kill them and allow for safe passage without giving away your position. When it comes to horses, chickens and dogs, they are a bit trickier to deal with. If you bring a silent weapon or throwable, you can easily take them out before they are triggered. Number 2. Similar to how ducks and crows fly away from the player that triggered them, players that are killed will fall with their feet facing the direction of their killer. Use this to your advantage when your teammates die or when an enemy dies near you to help pinpoint the location of the enemy player that killed them. Number 3. Boss clues will have a seal on them by default that is broken once a player interacts with it, revealing a dark circle in the middle of the clue. This provides you with valuable information if you pay attention to it. If the game just started and the first clue you get to has a broken seal, that should tell you that the enemy team just passed by. If you move to the nearest compound and the next clue is also taken, it is likely that you are moving in the same direction as the enemy team. Number 4. A boss clue will turn red and start screaming when enemy players are near. This is generally a sign that you should be taking cover and prepare for a fight. Once you interact with a screaming clue, it will go quiet for you, but will still scream for the enemy team until they interact with it. If the enemy team already interacted with the clue before you got there, it will not make any sound for them. Sometimes interacting with a screaming clue can be useful to allow you to listen for enemy movement, as the clue will still be screaming for them. The downside is that you may not be able to tell if they left the clue area. Number 5. When you're in the boss compound, the boss icon will glow white and dark side. When enemies are near, the white glow turns red. To prevent getting ambushed, make sure you frequently scan with dark side whilst moving around the boss lair or whilst fighting the boss, as players could show up at any time. If you're fighting the boss and the boss icon in dark side turns red, that might be your cue to get back outside and fight the players before dealing with the boss. Sometimes finishing the boss can be the right move, however, as long as you are staying aware of your surroundings. Number six. Always do a free reshuffle and recruit the free hunter every time you leave a match, regardless of whether you live or die. Free hunters come with free weapons, tools and consumables, and a lot of their items are quite decent. But recruiting a free hunter will save you a lot of money over time. Furthermore, paying dark tribute will sometimes give you plus 2 trade points to all hunters, meaning you get more points overall the more hunters are in your roster. I personally try to keep 50 hunters at all times, having maxed out my hunter slots. This means every time I get plus 2 trade points to all hunters, I get a total value of 100 trade points, and it stacks. Over time, you will have a decent amount of hunters with enough points to pick some of your favorite traits every time. Number 7. Cook your dynamites and frags. Throwing explosives immediately will rarely be enough to kill a player as they can simply run away from it. Make sure you hold it for 2-3 to three seconds before you throw and try to listen for movement. If the enemy is moving as you are cooking the explosive, try to throw it in front of them so that they run into it. Once you master the art of cooking throwable explosives, you will see a significant increase in success. Number 8. Most explosives will be diffused if they hit water or are thrown into a choke bomb cloud. When possible, try to take the wax dynamite stick over a regular dynamite. The price is almost the same, but the wax dynamite will not be diffused when hitting water or choke cloud. Choosing the wax dynamite over the regular one should significantly increase your chance of success, especially if you're new to the game and haven't had a lot of practice yet to land very accurate throws. Number 9. Looting hunters when your tools and consumable slots are full will give you money. Every hunter that you loot under this condition will give you 50 to 1000 hunt dollars. You can further enhance this tactic by taking the pack mule trait, which gives you two tools or consumables per looting instead of one, and the vulture trait that allows you to loot hunters that have already been looted twice. Keep in mind you will only keep the money if you successfully extract from the map. Number 10. Cash registers can be found around the map and have certain spawn points that they can spawn in. There are a bunch of these spawn points, so try to remember where you find them so that you can check these spots the next time you're nearby. Similar to looting dead hunters while you're full on tools and consumables, cash registers will give you 50 to 1000 hunt dollars and the money will be lost if you die. You can check how much money you looted overall by opening the map and looking at the top right corner. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you would like to see more content of this type, let me know in the comments below. I stream live on Twitch 3 to 5 days per week. If you want to support the channel further, there's a Patreon page and you can find my schedule in the Discord channel. I'll leave all of my links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.